Hello my dear friends of Symphonic Brass Music and good morning from me and good evening or wherever in the world you are to you. So good morning, good evening, whatever. Um, today I want to talk about something um, you will hear quite a lot if you record stuff in my studio or with me. A sentence I use or a word I use quite a lot and get some people confused um, because a lot of times I say this is not motivated. That doesn't sound motivated. That doesn't sound like you actually mean it. Let's make it that it sounds like if you actually mean it, which you hopefully do. And uh, I always have to explain myself. But I think that what I mean is something good for your recording and is something that will uh, improve your music. So I will try and talk about what I mean by saying your stuff should sound motivated. Um, if you're playing... You're a rock band. Let's say you're a rock band and um, you're playing your song and there's a C part in a different key, like you you switch into the your song is in the minor key and your C part is in the major key. Let's, let's keep it like that. Um, pretty simple. So there are and 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 you're just sort of stumbling into you're, you're tumbling into the C part. So there's no real break. And there's no real um, transition over, but you're just sort of tumbling across the song and well, there's the C part. I don't like stuff like that. I think that should be motivated. Like it sounds like you seriously, the, the only thing that you ever wanted for this song was that the C part is in the different key, it's in the major key. Let's get, stick with it. So either you just make a cut, just chop, stop and start in the major key, or make a really, really smooth transition. Either way. And nothing in between. So that it sounds like you wanted nothing else and the C part being in the major key. Not that it sounds like an accident, not that it sounds like well just happened. No, you seriously, seriously wanted that. And it should sound like this. Another example, if you have a song with a vocal in it, and obviously, and these vocals are sort of, and the song is aggressive. Either sing it in a normal mood, like neutral, nothing special, or you sing it as aggressive as can be by adding distortion to the vocal, but in the first place, sing it as aggressive as you can sing it. And nothing in between. No hesitation, no, um, yeah, well, I wanted it like that, but I couldn't get it like that or something. No, it should sound like you never wanted anything else than the vocal to be aggressive, because that's what the song is all about. And nothing in between. No half uh thingy, nothing, uh, it's a bit like, no. Either leave it be and no one will care or 100% into it and uh, people will say, wow, well, that's, that's a great part, that's, that's a great passage, that's a great vocal, that's a great C part, whatever. Um, but not hesitating and not second guessing your own songwriting. And the same applies to mixing. If there's if there's a part where I want to distort the vocals, let distort the hell out of it. And seriously distort the vocals as much as can be. Not just a little bit, full or nothing. 
I mean, obviously vocals should be understandable, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but not like, not, not that the people might think, well, is there something wrong? Maybe it sounds a bit distorted, what's up there? Oh, maybe something is broken. Well, that sounds like a shitty recording. No, it should sound like, oh, this guy wanted to have a distortion on the vocals, or on the drums, or whatever. And sometimes, happy little accident, need to lead to something like that. So if I have screwed up at some place or um, the way it's recorded doesn't doesn't work with the way I want to have it in the mix, um, I tend to do really um, aggressive uh, mixing techniques just to hide um, the, the, the mishap. So there has been um, a recording by Nico and the Sinister Blues where there was something wrong um, in the vocals. I guess something in a vocal chain or something, some, some plosives or whatever, I, I can't remember. But there was something technically wrong. Preamp, mic, whatever, doesn't matter. And I realized in mixing, well, I can't fix it. No way I can fix it. Nico was out and I, and I had to do it and we couldn't re-record it, blah. And I figured, okay, if I distort the vocals, that works. No one hears the mishap. And so I put a distortion plugin on the vocals. And so I guess it's the third verse or something. Some part is just distorted vocals. But massively distorted vocals, way more than I needed to do um, to hide the fact that there was something wrong. Way more. Just to make it clear, I was not hiding something. This part needed distortion on the vocals. And by doing it that way, no one will know, except for the people listening to this video, and I'm not going to tell you which song it is, you have to find it out yourself. Um, Nico and the Sinister Blues. If I find the song, I put the link uh, up here in the in the cards. Um, yeah, so this is what I mean by doing stuff based on motivation. Um, and it's just my way of giving it a name. So yeah, I hope that's a bit helpful. Um, thanks very, very much for watching. If you'd like to support uh, the channel, check out Patreon. There's a bunch of new stuff around with mixed critiques and, and credits and, and all that jazz and also discount, discount access stuff, something. Anyway, thanks very, very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>